Good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad to be in the service one more time in the house of the Lord. And I can tell you one thing that I do feel the Spirit in this place on today. I thank the Lord for that. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I would like to go ahead and get started with this message. I invite everyone to please turn your Bibles to uh, 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. And we will start with the 6th verse. We will read the 6th verse. I uh, will go to the 7th verse and then the 11th verse through the 13th. And then I may uh, stop at the 24th verse. So the scripture again is 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. I will start with verse 6. Then I will read verse 7. And then I will jump to verses 11 through 13. And then I may read all the way down to the 24th uh, verse. But before I get started, I would like to acknowledge everyone that has uh, welcomed me on this morning. I thank the Lord for you all, inviting me, giving me a chance to speak before you and stand before you uh, this time. I really have enjoyed myself, and I would like to, uh, first of all, thank the pastor, Elder Jerome Cox, First Lady, Evangelist Kathleen Cox, the youth leader, uh, Nidra Peterson, and also my co-worker, Mr. Peterson, and everyone under the sound of my voice for giving me the, this opportunity to bring forth the Word of God. And when you have arrived to uh, 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter, verse 6, it reads thusly. And David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. Verse 11. And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat it. And they made him drink water. And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him. For he had eaten no bread, nor drunk any water, three days and three nights. And David said unto him, To whom belongest thou? And whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt. And this is you Sunday, so it says, And I am a young man of Egypt. Servant to an Amalekite, and my master left me, because three days ago I fell sick. Okay, that was 11 through 13. I'm going to read, read verse uh, 16 and 17, 16 and 17, and then I will go ahead and read 19 through 24. 16 and 17, and then verses 19 to 24. And when he had brought them down, behold, they spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing, because of the great spoil that had been taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. And David smote them from the twilight even unto the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them, save... 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled. Verse 19. 
and there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that had been taken to them. David recovered all. And David took all the flocks of the herds which they dragged before those other cattle and said, This is David's spoil. And David spake to the two hundred men which were so faint that they could not follow David, whom they had made also to abide at the brook Besser. And they went forth to meet David and to meet the people that were with him. And when David came near to the people, he saluted them. Then answered all the wicked men, uh, and Bethsar, wicked men and men of Belial, of those that went with David, and said, Because they did not, because they went not with us, we will not give them aught of spoil that they have recovered, that we have recovered, save to every man his wife and his children, that they may lead them away and depart. Then said David, Ye shall not do so, my brethren, with that with the Lord has given us, who has preserved us, and delivered the company that came against us into our land. Verse 24 in conclusion. For who will hearken unto you in this matter, but as his part is that goes down to the battle, so shall his part be that tarries by the stuff. They shall part alike. And I would like to have the, sur the subject matter for today, all is not lost. Everything was recovered, praise the Lord. And we should give God the glory because of the victory. I don't know what you're going through on today, but I want to let you know that all is not lost. As we can see in this particular text, and if you read earlier in the text, if you start at the first verse, which we will not go to for, um, uh, for the time that's uh, swiftly uh, fleeing, that the Malachites decided to burn Ziklag. And Ziklag was a place of retreat. It was a getaway place that David and his 600 men went to uh, to get away from everything that was going on. David finds himself fleeing from Saul. David used to play for Saul to soothe his soul. And sometimes we can find ourselves in a situation because of our faith. David, he wound up uh, killing Goliath. Goliath was a big bully. And the people chanted, Saul slew, and Saul slew his thousands and David his ten thousands. And so David's very boss that he played for, that he was commissioned for, decide, he decided to, uh, to go after David. And so David finds himself fleeing and coming um, across the Achish king. And so he's with the Philistines, fighting with the Philistines. And when word gets out that David is with the Philistines, Saul is about to uh, prepare for battle with the Philistines and the Achish king. And the Philistines are worried because David used to be on the side of Saul. And so they were worried that David was going to turn on them. So the Achish king gives him an honorable discharge. And David flees to Ziklag. Now when he and his men come to Ziklag, they find the place burnt down. And the people were in great distress. And I heard one of the scriptures mentioned in the prayer about when one hurts, we all hurt. When one rejoices, we all rejoice, in, in paraphrase. And David was in distress. He was um, anxious. He was disturbed because the people wanted to stone him. And so David, 
he encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. And that's what we must do when we are in a situation. Speaking about the students, the faculty, and the staff, the people that are on their jobs, we are in a situation in which we are wearing masks. We are in unfamiliar territory. But we can encourage ourselves in the Lord. We can build ourselves up in the Lord. And so David finds himself in a situation in which he's feeling the pain of the people because it's nothing like losing something. If somebody else loses something, it's, it's different. But when you lose something yourself and you have experienced something, you've worked hard for a family and you lose something, it hits close home, it hits close to your heart. And so David had to encourage himself. And so David seeks wise counsel. I heard that mentioned um, earlier about seeking wise counsel. He goes to the, the priest's son. And so he, he asks, well, shall I um, pursue after uh, my stuff and the other people's stuff? See, David was very responsible. David was a leader. And with being a leader, uh, comes about, it comes about responsibility and accountability. There's a greater accountability. To much is given, much is required. And so you're not only, uh, your stuff was lost or taken, but everybody else's stuff that was under you was taken as well. So David goes after to get his stuff. And so David comes, he comes to, um, David comes to a, a young man, a Egyptian. And it's something about this because we see a person of a different background. And we see all of the stuff that's going on, how, uh, how, how um, people are uh, about um, 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 diversity training. Diversity training. Notice how David and his men treat this young man that was from a different background. And so, so they didn't just have lip service, but they gave him bread. They gave him water. And they gave him figs. So that let me know something right there. That in the midst of losing stuff, we still have something. God still has us something to give to someone else. And when we feel as if we're at our wit's end, God still gives us something. We have a praise. We have a shout. Amen. But God still gave them something to give to someone else. David encouraged himself. He had the right attitude. And when he encouraged himself in the Lord, he put on the ephod. It was a, it was a sleeveless vest. And we have to remember to put on our garment of praise. Have the right attitude, regardless of how we are feeling. Smile, because God is going to work it out. And we know that all things work together for the good to them, that love God to those that are called according to His purpose. We must have a good attitude, regardless of uh, what is going on. If God is with us, who can be against us? So David, we, and, and so the first point I would say is, encourage yourself in the Lord. The second point is, never count anyone out. Never count anyone out. Now, in, the, in verses uh, 11 through 13, you notice when you're down and out, you notice who your true friends are. See, the young man, the Egyptian. He was out with these Amalekites and they were burning down cities. They were burning down this, burning down that, looting. And you never know what's going to happen and you never know who you're going to need when you're down. And so David did not count this young man out. And see, David had lost something, but he still had something to give. And even though that this Egyptian 
was um, he was dehydrated because they gave him water. He was malnourished. They gave him bread and figs. And back then when you had figs and you owned a fig tree, that means it was very prestigious to you. You had money. So David and the man have a discussion. The man says, uh, okay, I can tell you what, where the Amalekites are if you do not kill me and you do not turn me over to my master. And so David and the man make a deal. And in 2017, I did this message uh, a, a while back in 2017. And, and I, can, I, can notice, I noticed that I have a different perspective. Because um, what I entitled the message back then was one man's junk is another man's treasure. But what I entitled the message today is all is not lost. And I see a different value. I see a different value in the scripture. Because God has matured me. He has given me divine revelation. Where the Amalekites did not value the Egyptian David because he sought after the Lord he knew how to treat someone that was different than him and so the Malachites felt that it was easier to replace a servant rather than to give him uh, medical assistance and we see that going on right now where some people may be, okay, we'll give them treatment, but then we'll leave out this other person because they may not have this type of insurance and that type of assurance. Is the scripture speaking to you on today? And so, the Egyptian takes uh, David and his army down to where the Amalekites are, and they're partying and they are having a good old time. They're celebrating. And David and his men, they smoked, they smoked everybody. See, they were caught off guard. The Malachites were caught off guard. And see, see, we have to remember to encourage ourselves in the Lord regardless of what is going on. Regardless if we have to wear our mask. Regardless if COVID is out and the, the numbers are rising. Regardless of how things look like, we must encourage ourselves in the Lord. And how do we do that? We do that through the scriptures. See, David had an experience. He had an experience when he was a shepherd. He had an experience when a, a bear rose up and tried to take his lambs. And he did away with the bear. He had an experience with the lion. Praise the Lord. He had an experience with the uncircumcised Philistine. And see, when we have an experience, when we have an encounter with the Lord, we're changed. When God comes in and He takes residence, we will never be the same. But see, we, we must stir up the guilt that God has given us because if we do not, we will have a reprobate mind. That means that if we keep on doing wrong, if we keep on doing wrong, and regardless of if the Holy Spirit tells us to do right, we keep on doing wrong, then, then we will be given over to a reprobate mind. That means we will feed that flesh so much that we will glorify the flesh. But I thank God on today that David glorified God for the victory. And we should glorify God for every victory, every day. In the word of God, it says, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So regardless of if it's COVID out, regardless of how you feel, regardless if it's raining outside, we should encourage ourselves in the Lord. Because why? Because this is the day. God has already made this day. He gives us fresh and new mercies every day. Great is thy faithfulness. When we are not faithful, God is faithful. God does not turn his back on us. And even before we even thought about him, he thought about us. My brothers and sisters, as I come to the close of this message, I would like to go over these message points. 
Point number one, encourage yourself in the Lord. Don't take it personal. Leaders and even young people, don't take it personal. When people rise up against you. God has put us in this place for such a time as this. Speak to me, Esther. Amen. Don't count anyone out. Point number two, don't count anyone out. Because we never know who we're going to need when we are down. All right, we really find out who our friends are when we don't have any money or when we're down and out, when we're sick. We really find out who our friends are. All is not lost. That will be a message point. All is not lost. Praise the Lord. Regardless of how 2020 looks, all is not lost. Praise the Lord. And lastly, Give all credit to God. Give all credit to God. Who, what God am I talking about? Jehovah God. I'm talking about the God, the creator of the universe. Amen. The father of Jesus. Amen. Notice, sharing, generosity. David shared with the people that did not come with him and were weak. When the men decide to become wicked and say, no, you didn't show up for the fight. See, God blesses us to bless others. When God blesses us, he has more than us on his mind. Praise the Lord. So we must remember that all is not lost. And all, so we must encourage ourselves in the Lord by getting into the word of God. Praise the Lord. Stirring up that gift, being positive. Remember, don't count, don't count anyone out. And give all credit to God. May God bless everyone.